Welcome to another episode of Kika Tech. So, if you are new to my channel, and this channel I have created for uh, discussing about software testing tools, technologies, and certificates, and other stuffs, which can help you to in, uh, develop your career in software testing. So uh, here we are discussing about different uh, technologies and approaches of software testing, not even uh, automation, but we also talked about the manual testing approaches and the uh, new math testing methodologies. So if uh, so, please do like, share, and subscribe my uh, channel, and don't forget to press notification bell. So uh, friends, today we are going to talk about API monitoring. So it's quite a different. Um, topic which we are going to discuss everything uh, uh, today. So uh, what is API monitoring and how does it work and everything we are going to discuss about it. But I think in uh, in a single um, uh, sentence, if you want to say what is the significance of API monitoring is that monitoring is everything. So in today's era, whenever whatever uh, the product we are creating, uh, the monitoring is very, very requirement uh, for its sustainability for its performance and everything. So this is our uh, roadmap for today. First we will talk about the introduction of API monitoring. Then we will talk about why API monitoring is required. Then uh, we will uh, talk about how does it work. Uh, later on we will talk about how to choose the right uh, API monitoring tool, which is a very, very important topic. Then uh, in the last we will talk about the couple of um, API monitoring tools which are available in the market. So let's start with the introduction of API monitoring. So API monitoring is the process of observing the functional availability and performance metrics of an API. As you know, in the today's uh, world, the most of the applications are developed on web-based, uh, are the web-based applications or cloud-based applications, which are purely dependent on the APIs, as the APIs are the backbone of the most of the applications right now. So APIs can be internal, it can be external, or it can be a third-party API that can rely on the other application. As we saw that there are uh, many applications like the web, uh, the weather forecast applications, okay, which can be used in uh, our application uh, also. Uh, what they do, they provide us a certain APIs which we can use, and if we want to show weather uh, forecast in on our application or on our website, then we can show it. So it's a very uh, handy approach. Uh, uh, many applications and many uh, companies they are providing services like that. So this is called it can be uh, treated as third-party API. So what we have, why? So you, so we have to monitor the APIs because our application needs that service or data which are provided. So our application is dependent on those uh, data and the services. And our uh, APIs has performance guarantees like uh, service level agreements. In many companies, uh, they are providing the SLAs also that. Uh, if our APIs got down, then we will uh, restart it them or try to fix them within the certain amount of period of time. So it all so those must be complied. So, uh, so it's the very uh, uh, good if we are monitoring the APIs and we can uh, match our SLAs. So there are different ways to monitor the APIs, but every organization choose typically an API tool which can collect and the analyze the matrices. So matrices are collected at the pre at the predetermined to have the benchmark requirements. So uh, if we have a collection of the APIs and we want to um, uh, make them a benchmark, that okay for all the APIs should work. Uh, in this particular manner, or the response should come in this particular period of time, and uh, they are uh, they are, they should not be volatile. They should uh, perform in a consistent manner. So all those things, uh, the benchmarks the requirements can be performed then via API monitoring. So why API monitoring is required? So the key question is here that uh, what it gives us, how it helps us. So uh, before uh, going to the uh, why we required it, uh, so we should un get the answer of these three questions first, that are our APIs are, are available, how are the APIs behaving, and are APIs functionally as expected? OK, they are working as expected. If in case the APIs fails, then our applications fails. So if we don't want to uh, fail our application, if we don't want our application got failed, 
then we should identify these three things. Our APIs are available, how our APIs are behaving, are they consistent in nature, how they are performing, or they are working as expected, whatever uh, the data is. Uh, suppose if we have some gate APIs, they should fetch the data from DB or from the third party, that are they getting all the data based on the uh, parse parameters? Okay, if our, uh, and we should also understand that uh, APIs endpoints should uh, work properly. What if they have a particular sequence, then those sequence should be followed properly. Suppose on the one API call, if internally another API is called, so those sequence should be worked. Okay, and right now in, uh, in today's world, uh, we know that we are working in agile. Uh, Practice. We are following the agile practices, and we are uh, mostly dependent on CI/CD. So, uh, what we are doing mostly uh, in every iteration, we or in every uh, month, we are trying to uh, go for release. So, uh, the development, deployment, and testing. These are the continuous process right now. So, uh, if we are uh, monitoring our script. Then it will be very very helpful for us. Uh, so what happens that if our previous version of the API was working fine and we and we deploy a new version, then uh, we should monitor it that okay because of the new changes the API is not getting uh, fail or uh, it it should be consistent in the same manner previously it was. So this is very very important because right now uh, we have the frequent deployments in the production. Uh, as uh, because the company wants to go live as soon as possible, so the monitoring is very very important. So our business uh, uh, runs uninterrupted, and our all the customers get all the facilities on time, and they are getting everything uh, sustainable. If we want to give sustainable products, then uh, our API should be properly monitored, and they can show us and they can tell us that. What the problem we are getting, and how we are getting the problem, and when we are getting the problems. So uh, now let's see how the API monitoring works. So this is a very um, basic steps. There are basic stages uh, when we are monitoring the APIs. So what it will do? It would. Uh, it can be worked as periodically invoking the APIs from the multiple uh, from the multiple locations or multiple groups, whatever uh, our uh, business requirement and whatever the nature of our product is. So uh, there are some uh, small steps uh, which uh, is uh, followed when an API is monitored. First, configuration. So the configuration is like that. Various parameters have been configured for an API, like it's an HTTP method and uh, the what kind of uh, URL it has, the request details, the payloads, uh, the parameters, the locations of APIs. Okay. Then the second part comes when the configuration done properly, it's run. So how frequently we want to run our APIs? We want to run the APIs uh, fortnightly, or we want to run it on daily basis, or we want to run on the weekly basis, or we want it to run on the hourly basis also. So uh, whatever is our requirement, we configure it. Uh, as per our requirement, so the system should record the results of the API invocation and like the responses, their responses, their timings, uh, the response timings, this uh, HTTP status like 200, 400, 404, whatever uh, we have configured for the APIs. Then we uh, then uh, we configure the alerts. So what happens when we configure everything when and when we run the APIs? Then uh, the third step comes as alerts. So uh, what alert will do? It will verify uh, that uh, what we are expecting is we are getting actually or not. So in case if we are not getting what we want, then uh, it will uh, generate an alert. It will send an email, uh, automatic emails or automatic messages will be sent and to the concern teams. Then the final step is come as report. So we generate the reports on availability of response time over a period of time, of or if we want to do an historical. Uh, Analysis on the uh, behavior of our APIs, then we can get the reports. Okay, if we are running it on weekly basis. So now let's see on the uh, past four uh, weeks of from last uh, past two months how our APIs were behaving. Is this is there any consistency, a related issue or some performance related issue? So we can uh, analyze our performance of our APIs and we can take the any um, required steps. If is there any uh, problem? We can if we identify any problem in that. 
Now, the very important point here is how to choose an API monitoring tool. So there are many uh, criteria on which we can choose the uh, API uh, monitoring tool. As you know, uh, there are certain um, criteria where we choose the uh, web monitoring also. So, this, so as the web is the, the front end is the crucial part as well as the API is uh, uh, more crucial uh, for the product because it's the backbone of a product. Uh, so what API monitoring provides us that crucial performance data from which the developer and operation teams uh, use to improve uh, the user experience. Uh, there are a variety of tools available in the market, but uh, we should also uh, identify because there are many tools available in the market. So based on our requirements, based on the nature of the product, and there are certain points which we should keep into mind when we select a API monitoring tool. So first is intuitive. Uh, so we don't you want to use a tool which we don't understand okay if there is a complex tool which has uh, numerous of uh, functionality available we, we don't know how to use those functionality then it's not a good thing to use those kind of tools if a tool is simple if it provides all the required functionalities which is uh, suitable for our product then we should go for uh, that reliable tool then the second point is reuse so reuse is a very, very important point. So if in case uh, for the API monitoring tool, if we uh, require to create some scripts, then those scripts should be reused for the developer and the tester to avoid the mix, uh, doing the same task again and again. And it, so if uh, that tool is uh, providing us a reuse uh, feature, then it's very, very good. It saves time, efforts. The third option is run options. So the what the run option is says that how frequently we want to run our API, APIs, how frequently we want to monitor our APIs. So like uh, I said previously, if the tool provides us a weekly or a monthly or a fortnightly um, configuration to uh, us to configure our APIs so we can run uh, the APIs on a weekly basis or on the monthly basis. Again, it's totally depend on the nature of the product. Suppose if I want, if my product is frequently going into the release, uh, like be, uh, like bi-weekly, so uh, there might be a chance that I need to uh, check my APIs, monitor my APIs so closely. So I, um, so the uh, so the tool should provide me a hourly basis uh, API monitoring functionality. Okay. If that tool is providing, suppose if my uh, product nature is uh, something like that, that I sh if I run my APIs uh, once in a month, uh, so I, I can just run in once in a month in a, on a particular uh, date or um, in a month, then I can just verify it that uh, that okay, my all the APIs are working fine. So the run options though, if it's depend on, again on the nature of the product. If we are on getting much and much option in a tool, which provides suppose there's a tool if it provides a weekly, hourly, monthly basis, then it's very good. But if a if a tool is provide only me monthly basis uh, API monitoring, then it's not useful for me. Okay. The last point is sequencing and assertion. So this is a very very key uh, point. Accuracy is the key. You know, uh, if uh, suppose one API is depend on the other API, and once uh, once the first API calls, then it will trigger the another API. So how good we can maintain sequence uh, sequencing uh, uh, by using that tool, which is a very very key uh, important part, and how very good we can configure the assertions because you know the assertions are very very much required, which can uh, provide us. Uh, which can give us an insight about our a API's performance. So, it's uh, why uh, it's very good if it's pro uh, provide us a good uh, good kind of assertions for uh, verifying our APIs. So, functional correctness is very very important. Okay, if our API is running the wrong data and we have fallen into type of illusion of the availability. Okay, so the assertions uh, part is very is very very important for while if, uh, monitoring the API. If we are trying to choose an API monitoring tool, then tool should provide us a good kind of assertions. The another point is uh, consumable and shareable. So a tool should be communicate data easily, swiftly, and clearly. Okay, as you know that these uh, co the communication is, is is a key part of any tool. If API performance, uh, we are trying to identify or uh, we are trying to 
note down the uh, the API performance, then if uh, that particular tool is not providing us, uh, if we are not able to configure it with our uh, applications, or if suppose if I want to configure it with my uh, like Microsoft Teams, or if I want to configure it like Slack, so I can get the alerts instantly instead of emails. I can get the alerts on my chat boxes, on my chat messengers. Uh, then that 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 tool is very very uh, useful for me. If it is not providing me, if suppose if the if it is only providing me emailing, but I want it on the uh, you know we have um, multiple group uh, groups also the chat groups where we want the alerts. If that tool providing provides me those uh, features, then it's very very useful for me. The third point, another point is adaptability. Okay, so the adaptability is how we can easily configure it with our with our APIs. Suppose uh, if my uh, APIs are developed in uh, in JSON, okay, and that tool is not providing the JSON functionality. Uh, sorry, uh, it's not providing us the uh, configuration with the JSON APIs, then it's not useful for me. Okay. The another part is alerts. How good alerts it provides. Okay. So which is a very very critical part. Uh, if we actually know that something went wrong, in order to fix it, then find a tool which provides this. Okay. And uh, then it will be a very very good thing for us. So last but not least, there there are. Uh, uh, tons of uh, API monitoring tools available in the market, but there are few uh, which are mainly used in the market. So, first one is Postman, another is BlazeMeter. BlazeMeter is not uh, freeware, it's a paid tool. Postman is freeware, Assertable, App Dynamics, and there are many other more tools available in the market. So, friends, I think uh, this uh, session helps you to understand the API monitoring, uh, how uh, API monitoring is important, how we can perform API monitoring tool, why we should uh, do API monitoring. Okay, So right now, as we know that from last uh, five to seven years, the API testing is uh, come is very, very hot in, uh, in the software testing world, and even in the, uh, in the software development also. Uh, so the AP, uh, once the API, as we know that the API is uh, testing is very very important so as well as the API monitoring also because right now it's very very competitive uh, age uh, where we are trying to give our product as soon as it, uh, in the market so the uh, and we are creating mostly the web applications so the API monitoring is very very important in such a case so thank you very much for your time